So hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this session. I know it's especially challenging after the lunch break. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm solutions architect and Bluesoft, and I'm here with my colleague Martin, uh, who is a senior software, uh, senior DevOps engineer uh, in Bluesoft. Uh, both of us represent the Starboost for AI team, so we are responsible for building cloud-native uh, AI development platform for our company. And today, uh, we would like to share with you our journey and insights on how we adopted LLMs from the security perspective, of course. And we hope that you will find this session informative and engaging. So let's not waste time and let's dive in. The agenda for this session is as follows. So we will start with some context, uh, where we are as a company in our adoption. Then we will move through the uh, types of systems, the rack and the multi-agent, uh, in the rack and multi-agent architecture, and the threats which are present in these kind of systems. After this, we want to share our findings and observations from the LLM security practices, uh, which we incorporated into our stack. Uh, and of course, uh, we will conclude with some future directions. Uh, so uh, as a company, we place ourselves somewhere in the middle. Yeah? So using the generative AI strategy archetypes from McKinsey, we are not the makers. Yeah? So we do not compete with OpenAI or Anthropic on building the foundational uh, large language models. But also, on the other hand, we assess that some low code of the chef solutions are not sufficient for our use cases and for use cases of uh, our clients. So our teams are mainly focused on building the production ready uh, LLM based systems, either in this uh, advanced rack architecture or in the multi agent uh, architecture. And to address these challenges uh, our teams face uh, in their AI development process, we have started building the cloud native AI development platform. And this is our approach uh, to drive efficient, optimal, and secure uh, AI adoption within our organizations. Uh, and I want to highlight at this moment here that the, this platform engineering is uh, quite popular these days. And uh, I would not treat this platform as some you know, silver bullet, yeah, which solves all of our problems. It's rather a tool, a technique, uh, which we can use uh, to drive uh, the AI transformation at the organization level. Yeah? And uh, regarding the architecture of this platform, as you see, it could be divided into four layers. At the bottom, we have the infrastructure layer with our beloved Kubernetes. Then we have the foundation layer with some pretty standard set of components from cloud native uh, world, which are responsible for CI, CD, observability, and others. At the top, we have the uh, platform portal. So it's backstage in our case, and this is the way how our teams uh, access the platform and its services. And the most important layer is this services layer. So here, we try to address the cognitive load, which is added because of this new technology. And we uh, try to address the needs uh, of our teams. And as you see, uh, there are a couple of services highlighted here, like rack provisioning service or experiment and evaluation service, uh, and also rack security scanning service. And um, when, you when you create this uh, type of services, uh, you could use different techniques, yeah? like such service could be some set of microservices, or it could be some uh, pipeline, or uh, some Kubernetes operator. The most important thing here is to create these services in mind to, to, to address the needs of the teams in this particular uh, organization. And uh, with this context in mind, let's dive into the details related to the threats which are present uh, in the systems which we run uh, on our platform. So uh, as an inspiration to delve into these threats uh, which are present in our systems, we started with the OVASP top 10 for LLM applications. And we adjusted this threat model to the, our platform reality and our team's reality. 
So as you see, uh, we are pretty exposed uh, for this type of architecture to most of the threats. Um, we replaced the training data poisoning to knowledge-based poisoning because this type of teams, they are not uh, optimizing their uh, rack architecture by fine-tuning the models. They rather use different techniques. Uh, we are also not exposed to the insecure plugin design because our teams, they access the models via our platform and we have full control over the models which we are exposing to our teams. Uh, also, this type of uh, application is not exposed to excessive agency. Uh, and the model threat is also not the case for us because of the reasons I mentioned. And the things get changed when it comes to multi-agent system. So this is the simplified uh, model of application which is supporting the maintenance of the legacy systems. So as you see, uh, such kind of architecture introduced more threats to the LLM service component which becomes more complex due to additional routing topology, conversation patterns, agent memory, and tool usage, uh, which is the overhead uh, because of this type of uh, architectures. And as you see, uh, now we are, of course, we are exposed to excessive agency threat. As you see that uh, our worker agent could communicate with various systems from business systems to IT operation system to solve more complex problems. But additionally, we would like to highlight the agent uh, memory poisoning threat, uh, which could be uh, especially uh, dangerous uh, and could impact the behavior of the entire system. And later in this presentation, we want to focus on the subset of threats uh, and we want to analyze it from the uh, offensive perspective and from the defensive tooling, how we could address these threats. Uh, and we want to uh, focus on the prompt injection, insecure output handling, sensitive information disclosure, and uh, over reliance. So we will delve into these specific areas to share with you some practical insights and hopefully solutions. Uh, yes. Yes, LLM security practices can be divided on two groups, uh, offensive and defensive practices. Uh, offensive practices focus on identifying vulnerabilities in LLM-based systems. Uh, Garak and Giscard are vulnerability scanners, yeah? And vulnerability scanner in context of large language models is a crucial tool to identify weaknesses, uh, such as generating harmful, misleading, or inappropriate uh, content. Uh, Garak checks LM-based systems uh, against hundreds of no weakness using thousands of prompts uh, and check if the model uh, responds wrong and it try to find any failures. Uh, big part, the big important part of Garak is a big collection of the props. Each prop is designed to identify single kind of the vulnerability. Uh, Giscard is also a vulnerability scanner. Uh, the difference between the Garak and Giscard is that Garak is used some static collection of the props, yeah? but the Giscard is a mix of uh, test predefined prompts and uh, prompt uh, uh, generated by LLM system. Uh, so once vulnerability is detected uh, in LLM uh, system based, yeah, so the next step is crucial. It is identify and securing uh, them. As a security professional, yeah, it's essential not only to detect vulnerabilities, but mitigate them effectively. And uh, one of the approach is Nemo Guardians by NVIDIA. It is open source tool uh, that we can use to create the programmable Guardians. Uh, Guardians is a specific way to controlling input and output. Uh, for example, following predefined uh, dialogue paths yeah, using particular language style. Uh, so Nemo Guardians allows to add uh, for the developers these programmable Guardians to LLM-based applications. Uh, the next approach is Metalama to Guard, and it is LLM. Uh, uh, it's LLM that it uh, can be used to classify input and output from the LLM-based ap applications. Yeah? This model is trained uh, to predict uh, safety labels 
11 or 13 categories in MLM Commons Taxonomy of Hazards. Uh, it shows whether the, the response is or out uh, is, uh, is safe or unsafe. Yeah? Next is prompt engineering. Yeah, prompt engineering is a process of writing, referring and optimizing uh, inputs to encourage generative AI systems, uh, uh, generative AI, AI, AI system to create specific high quality outputs. And uh, model fine tuning is the process to ad of adopting predefined mod uh, model for specific task or use cases. Uh, we prepare several test scenarios uh, to test RAC application and then assess results. Yeah? The test scenarios involve using different uh, models, starting with open source models like LAMA and ending with uh, models like GPT and GPT-4.0. Uh, for our experiments, we created several RAC applications in different configurations. Uh, the application used the a Tesla model free manual as a knowledge base. We quickly perform indexing and deployment of uh, our application using our platform. It takes 10 minutes here yeah, to provision all necessary resources yeah, and application. In the various test scenarios, we use different defensive methods and tested the application without a, a protection layer. Uh, the test scenarios we selected were not random but result from our attempts to secure the application against vulnerabilities detected in the previous tests. Uh, or to check the bigger, weaker models, yeah, how it's uh, looking the other context of the application. We tested these scenarios using the vulnerability scanners Giscard and Garak. Uh, we collect scan results, logs, yeah, and then analyze them. Uh, the aim of our experiments was to confirm which scanner best meets our requirements, to check what vulnerabilities our RAC application have, and to choose the best defensive method to secure our applications. Uh, starting from the GIS card, yeah, so GIS card, yeah, the important part of the GIS card configuration is scanner configuration, yeah, because we need to configure the GIS card to know which type of application it's going to test. It is important to properly configure GIS card uh, because this integration with the LLM, yeah, because uh, GIS cards use LLM to generate test prompts and also to analyze the results from the RAC application and then create the report. It supports several vulnerability categories. We use seven of them. And starting with the prompt injection attack vector, I would like to discuss the results of our experiments. Uh, LM prompt injection involves using specific prompts by bypass filters leading the LLM uh, to ignore previous instruction or perform unintended actions. Uh, we notice uh, that using defensive techniques reduce the number of vulnerabilities. It's worth noting that using hardened prompts with smaller model like LAMA 3.8 billions gives better results than using GPT-4.0 without any uh, defensive approach. It is inter interesting that small model with defensive practices uh, perform better than large model like GPT-4.0 without any defensive techniques. Uh, in case of application uh, with GPT-4.0, and hardened and prompt, we, we are able to reduce the, this vulnerability completely. Uh, the next hallucination at misinformation, this attack vector check if the rack can generate hallucinate, not factual outputs. Analyzing the result, we see that we are not able to re reduce this vulnerability in all test cases, except for the application with GPT-4.0 and hardened and prompts, which showed resistance to this attack vector. Yeah? Giscard tested a uh, vulnerability to this attack vector by asking two similar questions and then comparing the, the, the response. Yeah? Uh, the reports clearly showed that the application responded differently to, to both uh, questions. Yeah? And the answer was uh, were inconsistent. Uh, the next yeah, is sensitive, sensitive information disclosure. This attack vector check if the model may leak uh, sensitive and confidential information, its response. Uh, the scan results uh, for this attack vector show 
uh, that we managed to reduce the number of vulnerabilities using the defensive methods. Uh, we, uh, the number of vulnerabilities decreased from three to one. Uh, it's also worth to nothing, uh, uh, not noting that the GPT models showed resistance to these attack vectors, yeah, and it wasn't necessary to use these defensive methods to uh, eliminate, uh, eliminate the vulnerabilities in case of GPT models. This, is, uh, it, this indicates the maturity of uh, these, uh, these models. Yeah? Uh, yeah, we also use Garak to scan our application and to confirm the results from Giscard. Uh, we ver verified the results using the Dan probe. Uh, we check three test scenarios and Garak returned similar results as Giscard, and it was sufficient uh, to verify the reliability uh, of results from the Giscard. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, that we didn't perform other probes because some performance problem with the Garak. Yeah? Uh, it's new, it, this tool is before release to version one, so the product is new and in our opinion has a big potential to improve. Uh, but we also found, uh, found that repos generated uh, by Garak are less readable compared to the GIS card, uh, making it more difficult to analyze results and uh, uh, detect false positives. Yeah? Uh, yeah, conclusion from scanning. Yeah? So uh, scanning crack. Scanning crack gives different results compared uh, to directly scanning the uh, model, which indicates that prompt, uh, knowledge base, and architecture of application affects the outcomes. Uh, we observe that scanning uh, application is important and we recommend that it. Uh, if we uh, talk about secu uh, secured vulnerabilities, yeah, we have uh, notice that we, the prompt engineering yields the best results. However, we are not able to address all vulnerabilities. Uh, on the slide, uh, we have highlighted uh, on, uh, in blue the vulnerabilities that we managed to uh, address. Yeah? And except of hallucination and misinformation, we managed to address them in most test scenarios. Yeah? Uh, scanning self-hosted models, yeah, directly scanning um, models is essential if we decide to deploy self-hosted models. Uh, models like GPT, GPT 4.0 uh, show better resistance to attack vectors in, and in our organization we believe, believe that the scanning self-hosted model is more important. Uh, yeah. uh, small models, yeah, it's interesting that implementing defensive uh, security practices uh, significantly improve scan results if rack application use smaller models like LAMA 3, 8 billion. Yeah? We also notice that the secured application with LAMA 3, 8 billion gives the better results than application with GPT 4.0 uh, model without any defens uh, defensive methods. And uh, scan reports, yeah? So we need to remember the, that there are just potential vulnerabilities. The results need to be analyzed and false positive filtered out, yeah? It's worth noting that in case of Giscard uh, result, which we mainly analyzed uh, for false positives, we found that the scale of false positives changed across different test scenarios and it's uh, untrenched from 20% even to uh, uh, 40%, yeah? Uh, impact on performance, yeah? So Nemo Guardians significantly impact on the application response time. Using Guardians is three, four times slower than just querying uh, using Langchain. It is not a suitable solution for application where the response time is critical, like chat application. However, it might be a solution for uh, multi-agent uh, solutions, something like this, yeah? Um, Lama to Guard, uh, we, uh, it doesn't significantly impact the application response time. We observed some increase uh, in response time, but it is not significant, significant uh, difference, yeah? For example, our application response in uh, 4.6 seconds, and the overhead uh, from the Lama uh, is uh, 300 milliseconds. Uh, if we analyze response time and application performance, prompt engineering achieves uh, the best results. Uh, because this method compared to the different me uh, defensive methods uh, doesn't add additional time overhead, uh, prompt engineering is 
uh, the most straightforward method for the developers because they are already doing this. It's not necessary to change anything in the code. Uh, and scanner execution time. Uh, time yeah? Garak tests take a lot of time yeah? because the way how the Garak operates, yeah? even if vulnerability is detected in the first interaction, the test is continued. Uh, Garak uses thousands of the prompts, so the execution yeah, need to take time yeah, to execute all these thousands of the prompts. Yeah? And for example, attack generation probe, it takes one hour. Uh, done probe, it takes half, uh, half hour. Uh, and prompt injection probe, it takes five hours to execute all the, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, prompts. Yeah? If we compare this with Giscard, which it need uh, one hour and a half to execute all seven uh, test categories. This difference in the execution time is very significant. And the next slide is about the cost, and uh, Patrick will continue this uh, discussion about this topic yeah, and uh, present our results. Yeah. So yeah, what, when it comes to cost, the, the best answer is it depends. Yeah. So, but as you probably expect, the, the rack with the hardened prompt uh, turned out to be the cheapest solution. Uh, however, everything could change uh, at scale and we need to be aware of it. Uh, so after we measured, for example, the average prompt token usage before and after prompt hardening, and for example, if we consider 100K requests uh, toward the GPT-40 model, the result of this uh, defensive technique uh, could cost us $2,400. Yeah? Uh, then we have uh, another defensive technique, uh, RAC with LamaGuard 2. So here you need to consider the costs of running this model on your infrastructure. In our case, it's more than $4 per hour, and without any optimization, it could cost $3,000 per month. Of course, uh, we advise to do some optimization. Uh, and then we have RAC with Nemo Guardians. So here, without uh, any surprises, uh, we identified like margin said, and it was also stated in the paper uh, that adding this defensive technique uh, multiplies the time and the cost by three. So again, for 100 tokens, 100K tokens and GPT-40, uh, such defensive uh, method uh, could sum up to $3,600. Also, we need to consider the cost of the scan. So the GIS card full scan uh, generates around 360 requests for our configuration to the application with average uh, prompt usage and uh, with average uh, prompt uh, tokens and completion tokens, which are mentioned here. And with the GPT-40, such single scan it costs for uh, more than $4. Uh, and also we need to uh, be aware about the internals of this, uh, of this scanner and that it is using the LLM under the hood, which uh, adds additionally half of the dollar. And also, like Marcin said, the, <laughs> the Garak single scan, uh, if you configure it only for a couple of uh, categories, it generates thousands of requests uh, to application, which could uh, end up with millions of prompt tokens and millions of completion tokens. So the cost of such single scan could vary between a couple of dollars to uh, even dozens of dollars. Uh, what are the overall conclusions from the tools and techniques we used? Uh, so first, the scanner stability. Uh, we had these issues with Garag, but as Marcin said, it's at early stage. And also I recommend the paper, uh, official paper, uh, where the Garag is introduced. It was published like nine days ago. I, I really recommend to, to read it. Um, and yeah, even despite the fact that we run this scanner next to our application on Kubernetes uh, cluster using Kubernetes internal networking, we still faced some, some issues, but we hope uh, they will be solved soon. Uh, repeatability of the scans. Uh, we need to be aware uh, how these scanners are created. Yeah? So if, for example, such scanner like a GIS card, if it is using the large language model under the hood, it also poses some risks that the scan results could give us non-deterministic results because if it is using some non-deterministic model under the hood. Yeah? 
However, our tests indicate that uh, we got this reproduci reproducibility uh, between the scans. However, we want to highlight it and again, it could change uh, on a large scale with different configuration. Then we have the RAC and IGENT security scanning. So of course we advise, even despite it's these small problems, uh, it uh, scanning of the applications with uh, the shift left security practices in mind. It's really helpful uh, and speeds up the vulnerability detection process compared to, to some manual tests. Then we have the OVASP top 10 for LLM applications. So we, uh, we assume that it is a really good starting point and we, uh, we advise you to, to, to use it before you, for example, move forward to some other topics like uh, AI supply chain security. Uh, then the proprietary models versus open source models. So as you saw, our tests indicate that the proprietary models are quite well secured. Thus, uh, we strongly advise to scan the open source models if you decide to host these models on your inference engine, on your infrastructure. It would be really, uh, it would be really nice to know what are the uh, risks uh, when it comes to these models and what is their overall uh, security posture. And the production readiness. Uh, some of these defensive techniques like this uh, NVIDIA Nemo Guardials, they could be really hard to apply in, in user-facing systems. So the multiplication of the costs by, by free and multiplication of the time. Uh, of course, uh, from the perspective of the delivery teams and from the perspective of the business, it could be hard to accept. Uh, and also we have, the, there is also lack of streaming support uh, in, this, uh, in this library and our teams uh, and apps, uh, particularly they are using the streaming uh, for, uh, to, ex, uh, uh, to improve the user experience. So for future directions, uh, we see from the perspective of uh, our platform uh, and our teams, this prompt hardening uh, sounds really nice and easy, but again, the scale, yeah? So if you consider the number of models, the number of applications, the number of teams, uh, some kind of centralized LLM gateway with the on-the-fly prompt enhancement or at least weak prompt detection, could be worth to invest from the organization uh, perspective. Also, these LLM agnostic methods, um, they sound promising, uh, but as you saw, uh, they have some limitations. Uh, so as a team, uh, probably we would like to explore the fine tuning options of the models. So instead of adding some additional components to the model, we would rather try to uh, change the behave, uh, how the model uh, behaves. Uh, and last but not least, the people aspect. Yeah? So it's really, really important to increase uh, awareness in your AI delivery teams because you saw that this pace of innovation is rapidly growing and uh, I'm not sure if we will catch up uh, from the security perspective, but at least we need to make these AI delivery teams and your uh, R&D teams aware of the threats which are present in, in, this, uh, in their applications. And if it is possible, uh, we plan to do it. We would like to expose uh, such a service uh, which will abstract the way how the scans uh, are doing, how the scans scan the application and, um, and give them uh, such uh, option. Mm. Okay, so thank you for your attention. We encourage you to leave us the feedback because it was our first time presenting at such conference. So it is very valuable at, at the beginning. Uh, and uh, now we are happy to answer your questions or also you can catch up on the hallway if you want to exchange some experiences and ideas. So thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. I, I really liked it. A lot of very useful information. Uh, you should be proud. Uh, I have a couple of questions. They may be tricky, and sorry about that. It's just that I, I see that you know so much that you may be able to help me. 
Uh, when you were showing your architecture, you have uh, multi-agent examples, and you're also mentioning RAC. Are you using RAC with multi-agents in the case you are, you are testing, or? This is, for example, the way how I'm trying to categorize these teams and their advancement. So, for example, in this uh, diagram with the simple RAC, I assume that, okay, this is the simple chat application, which is using the knowledge base and the large language model to answer the, the, the questions to this knowledge base. And um, I try to differentiate it compared to the applications which really interacts with some other systems in an autonomous manner. And uh, yeah, as you see, it's, it could pose some more risks. And there are different uh, frameworks which could be used for these multi-agent architectures. The most popular is uh, Langchain. There is also the uh, Llama Index that has also this option. And uh, our teams, I think they are also using the Autogen framework from Microsoft Research. Um, but you see that these solutions are also, let's say, at the early stage of their development. And you see that I somehow try to Visualize, visualize that they are multiple agents. You need to consider these communication patterns between them. But from the application perspective, it's like one service. So we do not, uh, it's hard to have some visibility into how these uh, agents are communicating, reasoning. And yeah, it's some challenge which we will need to face. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, another question, uh, while using Garak, that by the way, costed me $70, I think, to, to yeah, use it against <laughs> GPT 3.5. Uh, you find that always there are tests that passes and some doesn't pass, and you can compare, let's say, different versions of models or runs, but how do you decide when something is good enough or not good enough? What's uh, some tips for a strategy there? You mean scanning the models or the like application? Yes. So, yes, some of the processes are more in important. Some some of them so are less important. Yeah, it's context of the application that work. Yeah, I mean the rack application. What is the goal of this application? Yes. Yeah? So, sometimes the prompt injection. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's very important to to check if the, what is a vulnerability status of this application on this vector attack. Yeah. But of course, it is the, the list of the probes is longer, yeah, and of course, it's something uh, other uh, other probes are also important, yeah. I'm not sure if I answered the correctly on your questions, yeah, also, because it is depends of the application, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Also, also That's as far as for you, uh, yeah. also as far as I know, this is both of these scanners, they are already connected to the AI vulnerability data database, so something like the CVE data database. So yeah, awesome. and probably this integration will be much deeper and this database will be growing. So it could be also some, uh, some, some, some indication which we, how particular finding is uh, critical. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answers. Yeah. Thanks a lot for posting all the all the numbers. I thought that was great. Uh, latency numbers and the and the actual dollar numbers. It's super interesting. Um, I think when you're doing the filtering, it might even be more expensive than what you said because you might want to filter on each of the agents as well too. So if the agent is like going and collecting some information, yeah. it could possibly be tricked into like encoding that information in a way that your sort of like later filtering might not catch. So you might actually have to filter input and output of the agents uh, as well. And so that is even more latency and even more cost if you want to do that. Uh, yeah. As well, I don't know if you like thought about that at all. Or yeah, I, I used, uh, for example, I created this, let's say, this this, mm, this cost analysis based on the on the rack solution. But yeah. in the with the agent solution, as you mentioned, you have multiple of agents, and each of them could also use different model. So also, like we are on the security conference, but also what I advise is to uh, really invest into the observability solution because without the observability, I would not know how many prompt tokens uh, each of these agents are using, how many completion tokens, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's also worth to mention if we are here to, uh, to have such capability on your, uh, on your side. Yeah, and I was wondering too, like I think the 
generally the um, people building models have started gaming the benchmarks out there. Like so when the benchmarks are publicly accessible data sets, yeah. then everyone who's releasing a new model, you know, really tunes for those benchmarks yeah. and so now they're kind of worthless. And so I feel like exactly the same thing will happen with Garak here and any other sort yeah. of like public attack data set. So I suspect that's why your four O was like basically zero is that yeah. um, any, anyone who's like going to release a model will probably just train against this. And I'm not sure, like, do you think it's going to give you a good signal about whether it's actually defending against these attacks or just defending against the known public training set? Also, some, some, some place to explore some, 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 uh, some aspect is uh, do we really need to use the GPT-40 for, for these scans? Maybe we could use some cheaper model. You see that. Mm -hmm it was easy to calculate the overall costs uh, when you use the proprietary models and uh, we have this uh, price uh, pricing for them. But at some point, again, that's why it's worth to have this monitoring, at some point you can assess that, hmm, if you, I have such uh, amount of traffic, it would be much cheaper to run your own model on your infrastructure and it could cost $5 for hour and you can really utilize this model compared to, to some external API. So they are really, really different aspects how you can combine even these scanners with the models. Also, uh, I wrote, wrote in this paper from the Garag that they also introduced some uh, module which is using some, let's say, malicious model for generating and trying to bypass uh, the, your application. So again, you need to have this observability to know how such scanner, uh, how, such, how many dollars such scan could cost. Okay, I think we need to finish and leave five minutes to, uh, to change. So once again, thanks a lot and we will be here today, yeah. tomorrow and day after. So you can, you can reach us and, uh, and, and talk to us. So yeah, thanks. Please reach us, us if you know, if you want, yeah. So we're waiting for you <laughs> to answer for your questions, yeah. So thank you guys. Thank you.